doctrine can claim that the Western Hemisphere belongs to the United States and that the United States will not tolerate any European colonialization in the Western Hemisphere, Latin America, Central America, South America, if we can claim that that entire part of the world is our backyard, then why wouldn't a reasonable president who finds his country being surrounded by NATO forces and U.S. forces engage in the same thought process? Marty, if it's good for the goose, shouldn't it be good for the gander? And am I wrong in drawing that comparison? Well, if you're wrong, I'm wrong with you, or I fully agree with you. I think it's an obvious point, and there are several that go along with us. In our history, since the revolution, the, oh, we have never been seriously invaded from Mexico. Mm -hmm. We have a huge security problem now on both sides of the border because of the, uh, the drug cartels and now fentanyl, fentanyl is mm -hmm. flowing in as well. But Russia is not a key player, a significant player at all in this as a nation. They probably do have a grim black humor satisfaction at, at seeing us hung with our own guitar after, uh, uh, after so many of our own policies over the years. But the only time the United States was ever uh, remotely invaded was when Pancho Villa and his revolutionaries crossed the border during World War I. And uh, uh, the U.S. Army chased them, chased them out of the United States, though they were never actually able to catch him. But they chased them out of the United States in World War One, and there are endless movies made about it. And it was compared with European wars or our involvement in the World Wars. This was a tiny business, tiny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Russia has suffered scores of millions of dead in World War Two, at least ten million dead as a consequence of World War One, both from invasions from the West. And of course, Napoleon's invasion too. And it doesn't stop there as recently as 30 years ago. In the 1990s, when Bill Clinton was president of the United States, under Boris Yeltsin, the supposed era of golden age of democracy and free markets, because evil big bad Vladimir Putin wasn't there. Well, I was in Russia repeatedly on behalf of the conservative Washington Times newspaper in those years. And you were stepping over bodies in the street. And the smell in every public building was indescribable because uh, 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 people uh, urinated and did other bodily functions. Uh, the bathrooms were not available or indescribably bad and broken down.